Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. I hope you will enjoy today's video, so let's just get into it. Sort of this like three month rule yeah. where like you can't assume anything about this new person that you've met mm -hmm. until you get to three months because people can put on their best mask yep. for a while. They can be exactly what you need them to be. They can show up and be respectful of your time. They can do whatever the they want to do, but it's really hard for somebody to carry false qualities for longer than three months. So like once you hit that mark is when you can actually start judging somebody's character. People will start dating somebody, mm -hmm. go on three dates and already be like, I want that person to be my boyfriend. Right. I like them so much. It's like, you know, literally nothing about that person. You know that right. they're charming. Great. That could actually be a huge red flag. Like that doesn't mean <laughs> anything. So even being charming is a red flag these days. Not being charming will not even get you a reply. Not to even talk about that first date, but being charming could be a red flag. Okay, got it. There is no time limit for you to get to know someone and those three months, whatever you do on those three months, it's not gonna help. An F-boy will play with you until he gets what he wants. It's that easy. And let's face it, you're not the type of girl who will have him wait for three months. You're afraid he's gonna walk away and you'll let yourself get played. You know, I'll change him. I love having a really deep conversation with a guy when all of a sudden he hits me at the You're so pretty though. Like you weren't listening at all, were you? Aww. Uh did you really think I was? Nah, no, I'm just kidding. Of course I was listening. You've spent the last two hours talking about your feelings, cause that's your definition of a deep conversation. Or the best case scenario, you were talking about some purse that does stuff. You know, one of those purses that costs two, three, six thousand dollars, and you would want it, and I should probably buy it. Never lose hope, they say, but that's a lie. This is what women are looking for that you're probably missing out on. Now, here's the big difference with men and women in dating. In the beginning, it's easier for women to just get dates. They tend to have a lot more options, which makes them pickier. So on the men's part, that first dating threshold is probably where you're going to need help. But when a woman is dating you and she picks you, and usually she's picking that guy that she can see herself with long-term. So he probably has a decent job. She finds him good looking. He's going to have these desirable qualities that most women find desirable, which means he is going to have more options. It's then the point that the woman is struggling with is getting that man to commit and forming that long-term relationship. So if you're struggling with that first initial threshold of even getting dates with women, I think what's most important to ask is, are you the type of person you would want to date? Meaning, have you been working through your past trauma? Are you able to emotionally regulate? Are you taking care of yourself in both your health spiritually do you have a job are you someone that you would want to be with long term no i lied earlier when i said i was listening she goes on for almost two more minutes you want to be bored watch her video i'm gonna stop it here am i the one who i would date absolutely did i work through whatever did i regulate my emotions first of all i'm not 10 anymore there's an expiration date for you to blame someone else work through past trauma enough with that bs already not everyone has past trauma and even if they do not everyone lives in the past. Someone took my candy when I was 10 and I need to blame everyone else for every single action that I took since then. If she's dating men that will match all her criteria, obviously I'm the type of man that I will date myself. I am the one who got that first date, am I not? So after that, if in return you can't get that second date, it sounds more like a you problem, not a me problem. You have so many more options than I do when it comes to that first date. Well, if all those options disappear after that first date, then again, it's a you problem. Listen, if you were a good person in your past relationship, you should not even worry about your ex wanting you back. Listen, there's a shortage of good people right now, okay? And if you treated your ex right, and you did all the right things, and you were a good person in the relationship overall, right? Because there's no such thing as a perfect person in a relationship. But if you basically did everything right, and you treated them well, and you treated them with kindness and respect, then you shouldn't even be giving it a thought. They're gonna go out into the world, realize that the grass isn't greener, I want you back. 
Now they won't. What even if they do, they won't come back. Because once again, they don't always come back. And also because failure is the hardest to accept. Not to mention saying it out loud. And no, there is not a shortage of good people. Step outside of TikTok and stop trying to sell your courses, whatever those are. And you'll see it for yourself. And yeah, me and you both were living proofs they don't always come back. I never went back to anyone and no one came back to you. I'm going to change the way that you're viewing shadow work because I think a really common misconception is that shadow work is looking at the worst parts of yourself. But what the shadow is actually home to is the rejected parts of yourself. Shadow work's not about making the negative parts of yourself better or getting rid of them or replacing them with something better or more acceptable. And a lot of people fall into this trap and think that this is what shadow work is. But your shadow is any part of you that you've disowned. So your innocence could be your shadow, your courage could be your shadow, your love of life could be your shadow. So most people are doing shadow work with great intentions, but the unconscious energy is of judgment. It's of desire to get rid of these parts of yourself, which is what creates shadow in the first place. Your shadow isn't bad or wrong or scary. Your shadow is actually full of untapped potential. And when I realized this, it totally changed my approach to facing and embracing my shadow. Great, and what happened next? What happened after you faced and embraced your shadow? Did anything actually change or not really? I'm gonna guess the latter. I never had any idea that there's a misconception about shadow work because I have no idea what shadow work is. How awesome it would be if all these TikTokers got together and invented their own language so I don't have to worry about this. Where are we meeting the men that don't suck? Where are we finding them? Huh? Where are we meeting them? Natalie? Anyone? <laughs> ah! Everyone else but you, everywhere. You yelling like that, nowhere. You yelling like that is the reason why you can't find them, because they're in hiding. Even hiding in plain sight, but hearing you yelling like that, they'll never admit they're good men. What I actually love the most is that no one behind you cared. Natalie was, yeah, finish your stupid TikTok and stop complaining. You had plenty of good men in your life, but you saw yourself as a princess, so maybe stop yelling. Can I keep you? Forever. Oh god no. Do you have any idea how many hours are in forever? I'll give you one hour, not forever. They say it should last anywhere from 7 to 12 minutes, so in one hour I can disappoint you twice. What do you want forever for? You have been conditioned to believe, to believe that you have to earn, earn your sense of worthiness. Here, on Earth. Yes, you absolutely do. But wait, she actually converts herself to a newborn. That is her argument. And what did they do to earn or deserve our love? Literally nothing. All they did was exist. And because they exist, they are worthy and valuable because they exist here on Earth in a human body. You are actually that dumb. They do have worth and value for their parents. They don't even believe that they have worth and value because they exist. And somehow you do. No, their worth and value is determined by their parents. An uneducated child is not gonna have the same worth and value as an educated one. And when they grow, they're both gonna have to prove their worth and value to others. That's why even when you're going to a job interview, you need to be prepared for the job and for the interview. Why don't you try going to a job interview and tell them they should hire you because you exist therefore you have worth and value either you like it or not it doesn't matter someone else will determine your value just as you try to prove your worth and value to an employer you do have to prove it to everyone else around you regardless if it's about friendships or a romantic relationship i'm newly single and what i've learned is that every person that you tell wants to give you this little pep talk about how you're gonna find another man and how it's gonna be okay Yesterday I went out with my mom and we were driving in the car and she goes, oh, don't worry, you'll find another guy, blah, 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 blah. And I turned around and I said to her, mom, I'm not worried about finding another man. Like, men are everywhere. I'm more concerned about the cost of living at the moment. Like, how's a single gal supposed to save for a house, have a hot girl summer, and afford cost of living? Like, inflation is real and that's more concerning than finding a new man. Believe that.
And here I was thinking they sell tickets for the hot girl summer, but apparently they let in just about everybody. If men are easy to find, if men are everywhere, then that's an easy solution to a non-existing problem. Find a man to pay for you. See how easy it is to find one then. Okay, she goes in, she's gonna do it, she's gonna be the best one ever. How do you knock yourself out? Anyway, this is gonna be the end of the video. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.